Welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos. I'm a master beekeeper and today's lesson is on how to move bees from one box to another. Um, in this case there's a lot of reasons why you may want to do this. In this case this is a swarm that was given to me last Sunday um, and the lady wasn't sure that uh, if it had a queen in it or not so I uh, brought it in one of my boxes that I typically use to transport my bees. There's a separate video for that if you want to watch that. Uh, it's a that's all it is a, a box that has a solid bottom on it, a deep high body, and then I've got a robbing and moving screen permanently attached to it. Um, so it's been four days now. Today's Thursday. So um, if it, if her swarm did not have a, a queen in it, there should not be any eggs in it. So I'm going to show you a couple things in this video. I'm going to show you how to um, move the bees from one box to the other, um, and then the, in a separate video. Um, I will actually go through the inspection. I've got a lengthy video if you want to see that. Uh, but again, this will be two separate videos today. Um, so um, we'll get started. So one of the things you'll see me uh, kind of goofy, I have a, uh, a sweatband on. And the reason for that is, is I like to keep it to keep uh, sweat out of my eyes. And then I, because I'm an old guy, I like to use reading glasses to help spot the eggs. So I'll put those on and then I use a uh, LED flashlight to help spot the eggs whenever I look inside the um, cells. Um, it's pretty windy today, so I'm actually going to try it without smoke. And if I need to, then I can stop the camera, light a smoker, um, and then smoke. But we're expecting rain, so I'm going to try to be as fast as I can. So I'm going to suit up. I'm going to put my veil on. Anytime I go inside uh, the high body um, and actually messing with frames, moving frames, I like to put uh, gloves on. Some people don't wear gloves. I do. I, at a bare minimum, I always wear a veil to keep the bees out of my eyes. Again, if you get stung on hands, that's not a big deal. But if you get stung in the eye, you're in serious medical problems uh, really quick. So again, I always like to put um, a veil on anytime I'm manipulating frames. Now, if I'm just feeding sugar syrup and going into a hive top feeder, I typically may not wear a veil. Um, depends on how aggressive the bees are. Um, but again, um, since I'm actually going to be moving frames around, and, and they're probably not going to like, appreciate me moving them into a new home, um, so I'm going to put gloves on and I'm going to put, make sure I have my veil on. Um, so this hive to my left is the um, box that they're in presently. I'm going to have uh, pre-positioned my new box uh, next to it. So. In my apiary, I always run uh, eight frames, um, and I always have uh, a slope planting board, and then I've got a solid uh, bottom board, and then I've got a slatted rack, and then I run deeps for my uh, brood chambers, and then I run uh, mediums if I decide uh, I'm going to extract honey that year. Most years I don't do honey. Um, ironically, I'm a beekeeper; doesn't do honey. Um, unless a student wants to learn how to do it and then I've got the equipment to teach them. All right, so so first thing I want to do is I want to move the box of bees out of the way and then I want to put them, um, put the new box in its place. And the reason for that is <coughs> the bees are space sensitive to about four feet. It means they can fly back and find their hive uh, based on big landmarks uh, to about four feet. And after that, they have to rely on colors or whatever else are uh, to be the landmarks or the workers fanning their nasen off land. So in this case, they know where it is within about four feet. So I'm going to move it, my the existing box over, and then I'm going to put the new box in its place. And again, the reason for that is is when the bees fly back, they're looking for their home here based on their landmarks. <coughs> so if I were so any bees that are flying back foragers that are coming back are automatically going to come into this new box that I have because it's in the original hives location. Um, if you really want to confuse your bees, try it sometime. Don't, I recommend you don't, but if you did, if you moved your hive 10 feet away, you're going to see the bees and then you, if you didn't put anything in where their hive was, you'll see them flying in the air like, hey, my home was here, my home was here, now where is it? Um, so that's why I say they're space sensitive mm -hmm. to about four feet. If, if you shift it off just a little bit, maybe two or three feet, they can tell where that is and then move over to their hive, um, into their, their box. But if you moved it more than four feet, 
they, they'll become lost and again they'll just simply fly in the air where it used to be. Uh, I learned that lesson the hard way my first year. So now that I've got the new box where I want the bees to be, be, uh, be transferred to, I'm simply going to start moving stuff over. So I've got my box, you can see it's got my slatted rack. It's got, you can see the bees are already starting to fly into it, um, into my box. I'm going to line everything up. In this case I've got the new box and because this box um, I'm swapping out because it's permanently attached. That's the reason I'm moving it over today. Um, the other reasons you might want to move boxes, maybe it's old, an old box <laughs> and you just had them in temporarily until you could get some new boxes um, and then you're wanting to put them in there to replace them. All right, so again, I simply start moving stuff. Um, I always like looking down in my equipment as soon as I open it to see if there's any abnormalities with it. In this case, there's not. I'm going to take the hive top feeder off and the bees are probably going to come boiling up out of there now. Again, you'd want to be careful uh, that you don't squash any of the bees underneath. In this case, the queen shouldn't be underneath there, but it's possible. So in this case, I just leaned it up against something to where it gives her something room. And now that's all I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to move frames over one by one. Um, and just like any of your other uh, times you mess with your frames, you always want to move removing an outside frame first and I just simply move them over <coughs> and when you move them you want to move them back and put them back in the order that you took them out of so that if they did have uh, and I'm going to inspect them see if I see eggs as I go or I'm looking for a queen if I get lucky because remember she wasn't sure if she had a queen so again I'm just moving them over place by place in this case this one's all nothing but syrup Again, I've got an hour-long video showing what to look for in a detailed inspection. I'm going to check that frame one more time for eggs. But it just had syrup. Again, i got reading glasses on. The other reason I like using a, a flashlight is that one just had syrup in it, or uh, um, nectar in it, where they're converting it to honey um, from my syrup. Uh, so there's nothing in there. So, again... If I couldn't see in this frame uh, to the bottom of the cells, I would simply use that light, like now. I can't see in there because it's an overcast day. I'm going to simply rest the frame on one end of something, and I'm going to shine my light down in the bottom. Again, I'm looking for the queen, but I'm mostly looking for eggs. Because if you see the egg, you know that the queen's in there. And I see no eggs. Flip it around. And I got nothing. Okay. All right. So again, you want to put it in the order that it came in. Orientation. Again, if I were not, if I weren't actually looking for the queen I would just simply move them over frame by frame without doing an inspection. In this case I actually need to check for the queen. Um, again the hour long video um, shows you exactly what to look for. Um, a, no, a normal inspection should take you about, there she is. Now I've got the queen in here. I've seen her. She's actually crawling around. Now I'll try to move her a little closer where you can see her. You probably can't. Anytime you see the queen the only reason I'm moving her closer to you um, She's right here. If you can see her, she's crawling down. Um, I would normally not do this uh, and put her over to where you can see her. Anytime you spot the queen, you immediately want to keep her over the um, high, over top of the hide body so that if she falls, um, she's going to land in the box. So in this case, I've got a good uh, queen. She's unmarked. So now I know she's safely in the box. I can actually go a little faster, but I'm not worried about it. Now that I've seen her, I'm not too worried about it. I'm just curious now if there's eggs. And in this case, I can already see an egg. I'm going to shine a light in it and just confirm it, but I saw an egg. And I see eggs, so I'm good to go. So this is a good laying queen. So I can put everything back in and speed up the process now. So again, this is just a swarm that a friend gave to me. 
and she wasn't sure if the queen she had dropped the queen or not. Um, so she had a bunch of bees on the ground. Um, again, they're drawing out the comb nicely. This was just a found, uh, frame of foundation a few days ago on Sunday when I put it in here, and they've almost got it drawn out now. So I gave them uh, two gallons of syrup. So again, you see it. I'm simply moving them over now a little faster. And they're starting to draw it out here. Now, if you have a certain stakes like this where they're drawing comb out wrong, you simply break the comb off. Whoops, don't knock it in the half. Um, and then make them redo it. In this case, they were drawing like burr comb or brace comb. So I didn't want that to happen. So I'm making them redo it. All right, so I've got bees in here. Um, and now I'm going to simply, because I know the queen's in there, I'm going to simply take these, I'm going to clear out the pine needles, and then dump them in there, uh, the bees, rest of the bees in there. So in this case, knock the bees in there. Again, this is a box I use for emergencies, for swarms and whatnot. Now I'm going to put my hive top feeder on here, excuse me girls, up, down, up, down, up, down, so any bees that are there hopefully get the hint and move off. Up, down, up, down. And then I square everything up. And then because I see that there's a bee that's uh, on the outside, I know that this feeder is now empty. I'm going to simply come back with some sugar syrup and, feed, and fill this. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hive top on. And then lastly, what I do, because anytime I find a queen or eggs, I simply take a full red brick and put it on top. And that signals from afar, I can tell that I've seen either queen or eggs inside this hive. If I saw queen cells, then I would use a half red brick. So if I saw, so for, if I came out here and I set up this situation where I had a full red brick and a half brick, I've seen an egg or a queen, and I've also seen a queen cell. That lets me know and I need to keep close attention on this hive. Again, that was a lesson within a lesson. This all this video was was meant to show you um, how to just literally just transfer stuff from one box to the other should you need to. And then in this case, I was actually, it's a follow-up video um, to my uh, moving of swarm from Sunday. Uh, and I have a queen and eggs. So thank you, Shauna, for giving me the bees. Uh, have a great day and thanks for watching.